Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Tuesday, May 14th. I kind of hoped I didn't wake up here, but I did. And I think it's just now the beginning of the second Passover, so we still have hope. It could be this week. We might get to see Jesus this week. We can hope. It's our right. It's our blessed hope. All right. So anyway... I was uh, reading the encouragement for today and one of the scriptures took me to Hebrews and I thought, I don't want to just read one line of Hebrews. It's a good book. I think I'm going to start doing the whole book. And then I backed off and I said, wait a minute, Lord. What would you like me to do? Lead me to something you... Uh, what would you like me to teach today? And I just, I just got to kind of talking to him, thinking, talking a little, thinking, you know, trying to not think, you know, because if you keep talking, he can't talk to you. So anyway, I'm reading this one line and it said, take up your cross daily. And I'm like, well, Lord, what exactly does it mean to take up your cross daily? And I felt the urge to look it up. And I found this wonderful article. So I'm going to share it with you. All right. So let me pull it forward. And it's called, the site is called activechristianity.org. I read it over and I agree with it. I think it's wonderful. What does it mean to take up your cross daily. Obviously, when Jesus had to take up his cross, now this is me, not them, that thing was hard. It had splinters, he already had a torn up body, and that thing was raking across his back and his shoulders, and you know it hurt and was hard because he was already in such a weakened state from all the beatings he took. So I thought, you know, Lord, none of us have to go through anything like that. So I, what does it mean? That's why I was saying, what does it mean for us to take up our cross daily? Okay, so I, I did some Googling, searching, and I came up with this article. What does it mean to take up your cross daily? Jesus said that to be his disciple, you have to take up your cross daily. It's not just grace alone. Please hear me. I know most of you already know that. But there are things we have to do. And this is just one of them. We have to take up our cross. All right. Take up your cross daily. A condition for discipleship. Do we not want to be a disciple of Jesus? Of course we do. I hope you want to be. Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That's Luke 9, verse 23. What does Jesus mean when he says that you should take up your cross daily? To take up your cross is something that has to take place in your thoughts. When thoughts that aren't pleasing to God come to your mind during the day you put them to death on an inner cross a judging thought toward your friend crops up for example or perhaps a grumbling thought of dissatisfaction for what you have to do today as these thoughts come up in your mind you choose to deny them 
Your mind stands guard at the door of your heart and you get to decide what comes through. When a sinful thought pops up in your mind the first time, it is only a temptation, a suggestion from Satan. But you can choose to deny that thought access to your heart in practice. I'm sorry. You can choose to deny that thought access to your heart. In practice, that means that as soon as you become aware of the thought, you disagree with it. You don't dwell on it. The thought means a firm no in your mind. Now, this may be elementary for a lot of you, but it may help somebody out there. All right, so you don't dwell on it. The thought meets a firm no in your mind. You don't permit the thought to pass through your mind and come into your heart. Denying these sinful thoughts is how you take up your cross daily. You see, here's the thing. It may, it may sound elementary, like, oh, this is for the baby Christian, but None of us become perfect until we get to heaven, until we get our perfected, glorified body. Why do you think Jesus said, take up your cross daily? He didn't say, take up your cross until you become mature in the faith, and then you can lay it down because you won't need it anymore. No. Even Paul said, I think it's in Romans, that thing that I want to do, I do not do. And those things I don't want to do, I do them. Oh, who will save me from this wretched man that I am? But the blood of Jesus Christ or something like that. So even Paul, after all he went through and as mature in the faith as he was, he was writing that to I think it was the Romans. I could pull it up. But the point is, whatever book it was, Paul was letting us know we're never going to be perfect. We're always going to have something tempting us that we'd rather not be thinking about. Or we're always going to fail to do those things that we really hate doing but we know God wants us to do. And then we get home and we kick ourselves. Oh, you know, why didn't I go ahead and give that man $5? I know he, you know, he might have wanted it for wine, but for all I know, he was really hungry. You know what I'm saying? There's certain things that we really never get over. Whatever it is for you, you're not perfect and you never will be. So I hope none of you think this is elementary. All right. The scriptures are living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword, and they're for everybody. Let me continue in a minute. All right. Especially when you get to the point, if you ever think you you are arrived, that I've arrived. I don't need to hear this. I've noticed the people that were in the bigger churches that never sat in front of the, just didn't sit and listen to the preacher. They were busy, you know, they'd been there a while. So they were the ushers, they were the coffee servers, they were the nursery attendants, uh, workers, whatever. They weren't getting fed anymore. Hopefully they were at home in, in their word. But the point is, we should never get to the point where we feel we've had enough. We're full. And we don't need that anymore. Okay? Oh, Why does it do that? 
I just hit the space bar so it would stop going dark. All right, I think I was here. Suffer in the flesh. Cease from sin. It hurts to go against what you are naturally drawn to. To deny the thoughts that you naturally tend to think. Just like a physical cross causes suffering to the body or for the body, this metaphorical cross also causes suffering for your flesh. That part of you that is drawn to sin, which is denied its demands. But you have a good reason to choose to do this. And that is what is written in 1 Peter 4.1. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Let this be your motivation. This verse promises that when you suffer in your flesh... That is to say, when you take up your cross and deny the sinful thoughts that come up in you during the day, you will actually cease from sin. And it is not just a promise that will be fulfilled someday, unknown, some unknown day far in the future. You will see progress as you go. Perhaps you have a particular tendency to be harsh and cold to your peers. As you say no in temptation when these negative thoughts come, you notice as time passes that those thoughts don't come as often anymore. Well, I hope you're not like that. But perhaps you have been before you were saved and now you're a new man so you're picking up your cross and you're putting to death these things that were of the old man. Doesn't happen overnight. For some, yeah, but not for everybody. All right, let me continue. It becomes easier for you to be good and warm and kind to the people around you. This is the fulfillment of that promise. You are becoming free from sin in that area. Now this part is titled Following Jesus. What did Jesus do? This is what true discipleship is all about. It is a life that you live daily following after Jesus, your forerunner. What did Jesus do in his daily life? He had a firm resolve when he was tempted. Quote, not my will, but yours be done, unquote. That was Luke twenty-two, forty-two. That was right before he died. He was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. Father, if it's possible, take this thing from me, but yet not my will, but yours be done. He took up his cross and denied himself. And in this way, the sin in him was brought into death. His temptations never resulted in sin, in word, in thought, or in deed. It is also written, I don't know why that keeps popping down, it is also written that Jesus, quote, offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, capital H, that would be the Father, who was able to save him from death, unquote. That's in Hebrews 5, verse 7. That is what it takes to faithfully take up your cross daily. You have to cry out to your God for the strength to hold out, for the strength to say no and keep saying no in the time of temptation. You must humble yourself 
and have the same mind that Jesus had. Not my will, but yours be done. Taking up your cross daily leads to transformation. You won't always be the same person you are today as you are cleansed from the sin in your nature the fruits of the spirit come in its place rather than being quick to judge and critical or grumpy and downcast that's where I tend to go you can radiate love and kindness and gentleness Galatians 5 22 through 23 that is the scriptures. Galatians 5, 22, 23 is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. For the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Isn't that hopeful? That's what we want. Now, here's a scripture that says, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. That's Philippians 3.12. Paul speaking to the church in Philippi, admitting he did not attain it yet, and, you know, he didn't start writing these books right away after he got his road to Damascus experience. He learned a lot first. It was years before he could even go to Jerusalem and introduce himself to the apostles because he had hurt them. Okay. So, that's the end of... This particular lesson, which I thought was wonderful. So how do you take up your cross daily? Whatever thoughts come across your mind, desires to do things you shouldn't, nail them to the cross before they have a chance to take root and cause you to go do that thing. All right? Okay, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, this teaching, and over each and every one of you and all of your devices. With that, I say bye for now. Talk to you later.